We are being heated by a vast fireball in the sky. In the early 20th century, it was theorised by Arthur Eddington that the sun operates by radiance from its inner core. The mechanism of heating is thought by conventional theories to be nuclear fusion related. Apparently, the vast gravity of the sun causes fusion reactions between hydrogen atoms to occur at the solar core. All the heat coming from the sun is said to be generated by the fusion process in the inner core, but is this really the case? In fact, we on Earth may be being heated not by the solar core, but by the solar corona, which lies just above the solar surface and is viewable during a total solar eclipse. The sun's core is calculated to be in the region of millions of degrees Celsius. The solar corona is also millions of degrees Celsius. The sun's surface, however, is observed by spectroscopy to be in the range of about 5,000 degrees Celsius. How can something which is thousands of degrees heat plasma gases to millions of degrees Celsius in the corona? This fact is a paradox in the current model, known as the coronal heating problem. If the sun is really nuclear, why is the corona so hot? Since we don't know the answer to this, it seems prudent to conduct a simple observation of the processes occurring at the solar surface. Solar prominences arc in the form of electrical discharge from one place to another on the solar surface. If this occurred on Earth, it would be known as electrical arcing, in a process similar to that seen in the electric arc lamps in the late 19th and early 20th century. The light delivered from arc lamps was exceptionally bright, stronger though less reliable than that of tungsten filament globes, and if scaled up could easily be comparable to a source of light similar to the sun. Electric arcing on the sun proves that the sun is highly charged with opposite polarities in different regions on its surface. In other words, it is a capacitor, yet this observed phenomena is treated as a simple subset effect of the inner fusion process rather than the underlying electrical mechanism of the solar operation which heats us up on Earth. In fact, the paradox of the coronal heating problem can only be resolved if we allow for electrical reactions independent of the sun's inner radiance to occur on the surface, in other words, an electrical sun. There are, in fact, perhaps 60,000 tiny capacitors on the solar surface. These resemble standing waves in the surface plasma and are known as spicules. With conventional ideas, these plasma spicules could not exist as the force of gravity will simply pull them back into the sun, unless of course the stronger force of electrostatics is keeping them raised and separated by means of opposing voltage or capacitance. Since plasma is electrically charged, this scenario is likely. These highly charged surface regions are perhaps responsible for the unevenness in colour of the solar surface. Since electrons cause substances to glow when heat is increased, perhaps the brighter mottled regions are electron rich and the darker regions are electron poor. The difference in the number of electrons between different colours is the stored capacitance on the surface of the sun. Synchrotron radiation generated from the flow of electrons in the plasma arc is perhaps responsible for much of the damage caused to electronic equipment on Earth following a solar flare, and also the high energy ultraviolet radiation responsible for sun tanning. This seems more logical than the idea that a photon takes decades to travel from the centre of the sun to the surface, and that photon can only be emitted at a relatively low surface temperature. This seems ridiculous, as photons exert their effects instantaneously everywhere else. Perhaps this shows that energy which heats the Earth is not a manifestation of the inner solar dynamo, but solar prominences, the electrostatic processes which occur just above the solar surface. The main fact, however, which proves that the Sun is electric, is that the solar wind, corona, accelerates as it emanates from the Sun. This sort of effect can only be produced by a particle accelerator, which in turn is caused by a voltage difference between the corona outside the Sun and the interstellar medium. The Sun is essentially part of an electric circuit. I believe it must be the magnetic, very high surface area to volume ratio of the Sun's surface itself, seen in the spicule formations, which reacts with the interstellar magnetism entering the solar system, producing the corona of 3 million degrees Celsius. A nuclear fusion reactor inside the Sun could well be supplying polarity for the oppositely charged capacitance of the surface. We need two components to generate electricity. In the Sun, both components necessary for electricity generation are conductive material, plasma, as well as a moving magnetic field, perhaps driven by the inner, inner dynamo, are present. In an electric generator, we require fuel to create a magnetic field which may supply charge, and this may be the role of the inner dynamo, the creation of the solar magnetic field. If there is a nuclear fusion reactor, power source for the generator, then this is what must cause voltage buildup inside the sun. This in turn would cause the solar surface to act as a condenser, attracting charge from across the solar system. Hence the solar wind, the reason heat reaches us, is simply a voltage equalisation mechanism between the ions of the sun and the ions of the solar system. This explains the paradox of why the corona is so hot, 
It is an accumulation zone of competing charges. Acceleration zones re result in synchrotron radiation, the solar wind. Solar wind would not flow outwards from the sun, following electrical properties, without the presence of a charge imbalance. The continuous acceleration of solar wind proves the sun is charge imbalanced with interstellar space, part of a vast network. When sufficient charge is built up on the surface of the sun by solar capacitance, radiation is generated, electrical diffusion into the interstellar ether. This flies in the face of the conventional, conventional cosmology, which assumes that all heat radiates from the sun, rather than being created by electric reactions on the surface, i.e. the 60,000 little dynamos based upon 60,000 spicules. So, to conclude, we are perhaps heated by the corona, which reaches out to and surrounds the Earth, not the radiant heat of the sun's inner core. That merely sets up a form of capacitance for reactions to occur on the surface.